Kanye West, 10 studio albums, 24 Grammys, and numerous videos of him saying inappropriate things about a specific group of people. No, 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 come back, come back, come back. The same man that dropped the best album of all time, all time. Graduation, yeah, okay, that, that was pretty good. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, it, it was okay, I guess. The Life of Pablo, all time, all time. My wife said, I can't say no to nobody, and at this rate, my channel gonna go broke. So, um, subscribe. I love riding Kanye's meat. I pray to Jesus every night, and I spent hours defending him on Twitter. But most importantly, I've been dodging left and rights from UMG for the past year on this channel, so I can bring you these amazing instrumentals. when I'm talking about stupid shit on the internet. And that's why somehow, amongst the midst of stupid reviews of films and video games, that maybe there's a section of my audience that might want to listen to me talk about Kanye's latest project, Vultures. How I feel after calling an album a project. When I found out Kanye was dropping an album with Ty Dolla Sign, my first reaction was, why? And yes, I know collab albums exist in the past. We've got Kid See Ghost with Kid Cudi. Hey, what's up? And then we have Watch the Throne, which, um, okay, people talk shit about Watch the Throne, but there are some bangers on there. I invented swag, popping bottles and putting supermodels in the cab, and that one about the, the black people in Paris. You got chicken fingers, you got. <laughs> but Ty Dollar Sign. Ain't that the guy on the Suicide Squad soundtrack with the, the Imagine Dragons song? Why is he collabing with my goat? Wait, I'm sorry Rick Ross, I wasn't familiar with your game. And like Rick Ross had, Ty Dolla Sign had actually worked with Kanye in the past. Junior Part 2 had a feature from him. The fuck? Why am I on there? He also featured on New Body from the unreleased Yandy album, Fade on the Life of Pablo album, and probably more known, his feature on Real Friends, which is arguably his best feature on a Kanye project. Until Vultures, or not. Maybe. Patience. I ain't a Thai fan, okay? Like I was with Cudi and Jay-Z. I've heard his voice a few times in a few songs, but when I heard that he was doing a collab with Ye, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go through his discography and hear what it's about. And I was a little underwhelmed. But you know, I held on. I know my goat can't do no wrong. You know what the saying is? The, the coach is always right. He's got a vision for this team. And like the Donda album, Kanye had to prove himself again when the media Juice controls the meat. And the Kardashians were on his ass. But this time, he had to battle something a little bit more prolific than the divorce my wife allegations. And that was anti Semitism. Oh, he needs some black people. Hey, I'm not here to tell you whether Kanye was spitting or not. I don't know whether the Jewish doctor was the reason he went off the grid, grid, grid. But did you see that video in New York? Was, it, was he onto something? You dog whistling fool. On this basis, was there any surprise of how difficult it was for this album to be made? Like, do you guys realize how lucky you are that you were even able to listen to Kanye? So, why was this album so difficult to produce then? It's October 2022, and while some people are getting ready for Halloween, lacing chocolate with fentanyl and needles, maybe getting fitted for the spooky season, a certain somebody was tucking themselves into bed after a tiring day. He was a little sleepy tonight, but when he wakes up, he was going DEFCON 3. Hey, I know, shit happens, we sometimes might go off the rails from time to time, might say something we didn't mean. Here, you, little you better back your ass up on your friend's dick, you fucking home. How disgusting. Hurt a few feelings, but what I like to say is, things ain't always set in stone. It's November 30th, and you and your family are gathered, maybe putting some decoration star on the top of the tree, get That's those right, lights son. on, and while you were getting excited for the holidays, looking forward to maybe getting Elden Ring for Christmas, I spent my evening watching my goat speak to Alex Jones and Nick Fuentes talk about an Austrian painter. They brought to the table. Especially hit the world if Kenny said even instead of especially. I was in too deep at this point. I had to force myself to see the vision. Oh, that's nice, Kenny. I guess we should spread a little bit more uh, love to everyone. I don't know why this exists, but but, but wow, very profound. Thank you, Kenny. No, fuck no. I did not. I did not see the vision. And Kenny has said some profound shit in the past. Okay, that's like George Bush not caring about black, black people, people next to Shrek. Sing it. Or how slavery was a choice, and um, most importantly, how he loves boobies because it proves he can focus on two things at once. But even I could not work out what was going on. Here. Now the aftermath of this was uh, Adidas ripping up the contract with Kanye and setting fire to all the foam runners. Not my precious foamies. I love wearing them to collect Uber Eats food when I'm drunk, and then never wearing them again. Actually, they didn't burn them. They sold them for money because big business making moral decision is not real if it hurts their bottom line. And then Adidas said fuck you to Ye, and now we pray that Night come back and release the Red Octobers. Gap also cut ties. A company that Kanye used to work for back in the day. Balenciaga said fuck you so they could twerk for the Simpsons. And JP Morgan stuck their fingers up at him and all of his money was froze. And if you've ever watched The Big Short, JP Morgan are the fattest fucking ops of all time. So now you know the story of why I got a look over my shoulder when I'm wearing my college dropout t-shirt in public. 
Hey, are you the horse from horsing around? No, fuck you. Watch this. We're not horsing around no more because Kenny got his shit together that summer. And it was a summer of 69, I'll tell you, because my goat was getting sloppy on a... <laughs> Because my goat was getting sloppy on a boat out in Italy. This was the exact moment Walter, I mean Kanye West, turned into Ye. We got rumors that Ty was out there cooking with Ye. For some reason, a bunch of people made up that the album was going to be called Ye Suki, named after Yazuki, the first black samurai in Japan. I'm, I'm not taking this mask off, by the way. This concept was hard as fuck. And there were inklings that, oh my god, someday is going to be on the album. But no, it was new, new music. No snippets, brand new, fresh off the press. And in October of 2023, Ye dollar sign was real. Because Ty posted on Instagram, their duo's initials, and that he was grinding out there with Ye in those oil fields. Hey, I'll tell you, if I was out there in that crib, best believe I'm locking the fuck in. They were out there busting down beats in Tatooine. But you know what Kanye's like? You think it's coming, wow, these leaks are sounding good, and then you get nothing. But it is so oh. fucking bad. Said the album was coming out on Saturday, it didn't come out. What happened? Um, I didn't finish it. Man Across the Sea, more like misinformation off TikTok. But on November 22nd, it was real. The album was not just a compilation of Ye getting head on a boat because they dropped a single called Vultures featuring himself and Ty alongside Bump J. On the 12th day of Christmas, Ye and Ty gave the fans an opportunity to hear some of the stuff they've been working on. Come on, let's all celebrate with a very, very respectable and exclusive ticket price. Who the fuck invited these two? They played Beg Forgiveness, Back to Me, where Freddie Gibbs in that All Orange is the New Black outfit was absolutely smashing on a song about how beautiful Big Titty, but naked women just don't fall out the sky, you know. Leakers were leaking, but I wasn't listening because I wanted to be surprised by the album. I wanted to load up that Apple Music listening event like it was Donda, vibe out, and get into my feels at 2 a.m. And then we got a release date, and it was delayed. And then we got another, and it was delayed. God, come and take me out this side of and it was getting to the point where I didn't even think this project would come out. You could pre-save it on Apple Music, and then you couldn't pre-save it. And then you know what, Apple? This is why I have Spotify like a big boy. And when you're seeing all this Mickey Mouse stuff surrounding an artist that has messed around before with releasing albums like The Delays of the Life of Pablo or Yandy just never coming out despite many different deadlines, I'm thinking, are we finished? Is this over? And another problem is, and don't get upset, the album wasn't sounding great at these private hearings. Can I talk my Can shit talk again? My and this led to one of my favorite artists, JPEG Mafia, to whine like a child to be put on the album. And he got on the album. It, it was that easy. Go watch this video right here, okay? You'll be able to tell how much of a difference JPEG's production made on some of these songs because honestly, he transformed them with those drums. So with Terminally Online JPEG on his side, Shut your mouth! They were ready to not release the album, but a listening party we could all tune in on on live stream. If if money. money. But I don't have any money, so I broke the law. You remember the Donda listening party? You know, when he had a fucking bed in the stadium? Were we gonna see a repeat of that? Well, this sucks. God, come and take me out this On February 7th, Kanye releases a music video featuring North, which had circled around TikTok and Twitter. I think it's a really wholesome song, and Ty is really good on it, talking about the struggles and pressure of being a father to his daughter at the end. And then February 8th rolls around, uh, and I'm starting to get a little shaky, you know? You know? It's the night for me, because I'm in the UK, it's 3 a.m., and I'm getting a little nervous, because I'm thinking, where's my goat? There's supposed to be a listening party in the shy tonight. Kanye was almost an hour late, but then he performed the album, and everything went well. Apart from the bit at the end, where he was about to finish off his final track of the album and Kanye rapped crazy bipolar anti-semi and I'm still the king and the stream faded to black because Kanye had been taken out by a sniper rifle now after this I was livid I pirated good money for this what's going on hey at least he's gonna drop the album now how foolish of me good morning it's the next day a brand new listening party coming tonight in New York and it was free Kanye brought out Carti and the whole crowd went wild there was this guy with an Apple Vision Pro around his head that was rubbed after the show and the whole album was played with some amendments. On the track Carnival, Kenny had to sample himself sampling Black Sabbath from the Hell of a Life song instead of the original because Ozzy Osbourne was on his ass after the Chicago listening party. Despite the fact that him and his wife were cosplaying as Kenny for Halloween, even after knowing about the comments he previously made. Anyway, was the album dropping now? Finally, no, he said. And I went to bed. It's the morning, the birds are chirping, but most importantly, I've had six missed calls because Kanye just dropped the album. So now this is the part of the video where I review said album. This is completely unreviewable trash. You've gone too far and you should hang your head in shame. This is probably Kanye's worst project to date. Um, not just worst collab album, uh, worst album. You think I'm afraid 
to you fools. The highs on Jesus is King, in which I don't think is a particularly bad album, but everyone kind of rates it very lowly, outweighs what this album has to offer. And criticizing this album feels very wrong because I love the stuff Kanye does, and I'll continue listening to this on repeat for the next three months and enjoy moments of this. But when I want to objectively look at the work, comparing it to other rap albums, comparing it to other things in this discography, it's not holding up. I think what we're seeing with this album is a lot of us versus them mentality, with people not judging the album for what it is. You remember that Hogwarts Legacy game? It became a statement, were you pro-LGBT, the game shouldn't be made, or did you not care and just wanted to play a Harry Potter game? And the game wasn't particularly great either, but people still praised it and said it was decent anyway because they were forced into two camps. If you want to criticise this album and you now a Taylor Swift fan and you hate Kanye, or are you a massive Kanye fan and you just disagree with this album? Lots of people are blindly neat riding this album like crazy. I've heard people say it's the best Kanye's done since my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. It clears kids see ghosts and yay. And honestly, I would love, I love Kanye's music. He's my favorite artist. He's dominated every year of Spotify rapped for me. I just realized how fucking corny that sounds. And he's a massive inspiration artistically. And despite what's happened over the recent years, I don't really see myself switching up because my favorite artist with a mental problem is saying some bad shit and acting out. But what I will not do is just blindly follow bias. I was rooting for this album. There is some good stuff on it. Burn is really good and all the praise it's getting is deserved. It had some old Kanye flow to it, but then you got nothing else on the album like that. And the song was two minutes. Let me ask you a question, Dan. Say I'm some big standing here instead of a woman. You still gonna tell me you got most of it? Adios, you fucking skank. Some mixes on the album were just nowhere near good enough either. I really enjoyed Hood right in the beginning, and then I started to hear how poorly mixed it was. And there's some tough, hard lyrics and some rawness to it that I liked, but it's not produced properly. The production on Problematic with the trumpets is absolutely amazing, and beg forgiveness. But then it's drowned out by lyrics that just say a whole lot of nothing. Donda, Jesus is King, Yay, Kids See Ghosts, all these projects from the last six years all had some sincerity about them, a vision, some sort of understanding of what Kanye was trying to do, but this kind of has none of that. And listening back to Donda now is kind of depressing because you can see the stages of a man slowly losing it with the death of his mother and his family being ripped apart. Everybody with that Backstreet sample never even made it onto the album because he couldn't clear the sample. Good Don't Die had some 808s vibe to it, was also taken off the album recently because the sample wasn't cleared at all. It's very evident that this album is incredible incredibly messy. There's some highlights on the album for sure though. I think King is really good despite the chorus having some incredibly provocative lyrics in it because that's what Kanye is great at, going against the grain, saying fuck you to what's been said. I think a lot of people have misunderstood this song for saying he's anti-Semitic. <laughs> But really what it is is saying you can say all this stuff about him but he'll still prevail and this album did prove that because it charted carnival was number one at one point in the u.s charts and i guess this album was a success for kanye and his team but from a fan of so many things he's done this album was a massive letdown if you go back and listen to some of those braggadocious i don't give a fuck kenny albums you know you look at Jesus, that is how you do something like that not an album filled with every song talking about how you fucked your new wife and how short he needs to get on her knees because ty dollar signs got needs i know how talented Ye really is i've heard it with my own ears ghost town Runaway, Saint Pablo, Reborn with Kid Cudi. We know what he's capable of, and it's far more than what we got. Vultures is meant to be getting a volume two and three, so we'll have to see how that does. And apparently Kanye is doing a solo album, which should be interesting. But at this moment, I'm not hopeful at all, and I'm really starting to miss the old Kanye. Over the past couple of weeks, I think I've learned how fragile people are. And I think a lot of people in the creative space have seen that with the recent tragedy that's happened. Mental health problems are always something difficult to speak on because they're not something physical you can see and understand like that. You don't really know why someone's behaving in a certain way, why they may do something like that or say something like this. Kanye's music spoke to me when I was at the lowest time in my life and brought me so much inspiration and confidence within myself, feeling really connected to the themes in his music and the stuff he was on, especially as a creative trying to move outside the box of what's expected as a university student. His music got me through some of the hardest obstacles in my life, and, and for me to turn my back on him and not share the same gratitude would be unfair. So for a verdict on this album, just look after yourself. Never let nobody curb me,